Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And success is the final end of those who have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no oppression except for those who are the oppressors. And I bear witness that there is no deity of worship other than Allah, who is the friend and protector of those who are righteous. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send continuous blessings upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and upon his family, and upon his companions, and upon those who call to his way, and upon those who establish his sunnah. As for that which comes after, alhamdulillah, my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> has gathered us for another day of Yom al-Jumu'ah where we come to hear the words of Allah, admonishment from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the words and statements and sayings and approvals and disapprovals of his noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with that, we uh, want to take a look at, or should I say, on the ninth day of the Hijj, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stood on Mount Arafat and he gave his last khutbah. He gave his last sermon. In this, in this sermon, there were final instructions to the believers, instructions and advices. The Prophet Muhammad, in summary, he actually made it very clear on how we were to conduct ourselves as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made it very clear how we are to conduct ourselves as human beings. He made it clear on how we are to conduct ourselves in our <coughs> business transactions and economical transactions. He made it very clear in this last khutbah of his how we are to deal with each other as Muslims, <coughs> our brothers and sisters. He made it very clear in this last khutbah on how we are to deal in our homes with our, with our wives the fact that we have rights over them and the fact that they have rights over <coughs> us and that we take them on a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he made it clear that in this deen that there is no superiority of the Arab over the non-Arab, the black over the white or the red or what have you, illa bi taqwa, except in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he made it very clear in this last khutbah of his that 
he left us two things that if we were to hold on to them that we would never go astray and those two things of course are kitabullah the quran and his sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even tells us in the quran bismillah rahman rahim wa atasimu bi habdillahi jamia to hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that ayat to be that the habl of Allah, the rope of Allah, is the Quran and the Sunnah. And with that, we find in Islamic history that the Muslims, with those statement, that statement, wa atasimu bihabillah, and holding on to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, that they would never go astray. They left from Medina to Mecca to Southeast Asia to all of just about all of Africa into across the Mediterranean into the Iberian Peninsula simply by holding on to the book of Allah by adhering to the Quran. <clears throat> we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the, the, he gave the Muslims of that time status. He raised them up. If we take a look at the example of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in and they're holding on to the Quran and they're practicing the Quran, we even say ourselves amongst us in our communities that they are the high, they were the best community of Muslims. The first community was the best community of Muslims. Why? Because of their adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not only that, they have become the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in have become household names in the houses of, of the Muslims for all centuries and across the world, all across the world in every community. The Sahaba are always mentioned with the practice of Islam, the pure practice of Islam. So their status has been raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Muslims went into Africa, they conquered. When they went into Asia, when they went into Persia, wherever they went, their status, those people who took the Quran and they held on to it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he raised their status. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith that was reported by Amr, أَمَّا إِنْ نَبِيكُمْ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قَدْ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ الْبِهَادَ الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَدِيهُ آخِرًا Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in his hadith that he has, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised the status of some people by this book and he has lowered the status of others and when he says that he has raised the status of some people by this book this means they're holding on to it they're reading it and they're putting it into action and when he says he means that these are the people these are the people who have shunned the Qur'an or who have put the Qur'an behind them and they don't practice it, even though they may know it. There's a narration of during the time of Umar al-Khattab, during his caliphate, that he came, he was coming to Mecca. And while he was coming, he stopped. And the governor of Mecca, he came out of Mecca to, you know, to meet the Khalifa. And Omar asked him, well, if you are here, who is in charge of Mecca? He says, Ibn Abzi. Ibn Abzi? Who is Ibn Abzi? Who is this man? Well, he is of the former slaves. He is of the people who were slaves that we have set free. He says, woe to you. How is it 
that you leave a former slave over the people of the valley, meaning the Quraysh. And the Quraysh is the most honorable tribe of all the Arabs. And you leave a former slave over top of them. And he recites this hadith. He said to, yeah, Amir al-Mu'minin. Verily, he has knowledge of all the obligations of the Muslim. And he has memorized the Quran. And Umar, radiallahu anhu, he says, Sadaqta, you have done the right thing. You have told the truth. Inna Allah yarfu bihad al-kitab aqwamin wa yadi'u akhirin. Verily, Allah raises up the people, of the, by some people by this book, and he lowers the status of others by this book. When we take a look at another historical account that took place, Imam Zuhri, he came into the chamber of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, who was the Khalifa at the time. And he says, yeah, the Marwan says to him, yeah, Ibn Zuhri, where, where do you come from? He says, I come from Medina. And he says, well, you come from Medina. Who is in charge of Medina? Who have you left in charge? He says, Nafya. And he says, who is Nafya? He is of the former slaves. He is not I. He says, you leave in non arab over the people of Medina? He says, yes. He says, who have you left in charge of? Who is in charge of Mecca? He's in, the Imam Zohar is a tabi. He says, a top. I've left a top. And who is a top? He is non arab another former slave. Then he says, well, who have you left in charge of uh, Yemen? He says, Tawus. Is he Arab or non arab non arab He says, he says, woe to you. You have left non-Arabs, former slaves, over top of the Arabs. He says, he questions him some more. He says, who have you left in Egypt? He says, Yazid ibn Habib, non-Arab. Who have you left in charge of Khorasan? He says, Abdul Haq. So he asked him about Iraq. <coughs> he says, who have you left in charge of Basra? <coughs> Hassan al-Basri. He's, Marwan doesn't know what to do now because he has left the non-Arab over the Arabs. So he says, who have you left in charge of Kufa? He says, Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim ibn Nakhli, and who was an Arab. So Marwan was relieved. But again, he asked him, Marwan asked him, how is it that you leave these former slaves and non-Arabs over top of the Arabs? He says, that Allah raises the status of some people by this book, by the Quran. Because all of these people that he named that were in charge were memorizers of the Quran. When we take a look, my beloved brothers and sisters, and we take a look at the six canonical books of Hadith, we take first Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari came from Bukhara. He was not Arab. He was born in Khorasan, which is present day Uzbekistan. We have Imam Muslim, who was born in Nishapur, okay, in the Abbasid province of Khorasan. We have Abu Isa Muhammad ibn At Tirmidhi, one of the great scholars of Islam. He was born in what is now known as Southern Uzbekistan. Imam, Abdul, Imam Abu Dawood as Sijistani was born in Eastern Iran. Imam Ibn Majah al Khazwini was born in what is now known as Khazbin in, in Iran. All these people were non Arab. When we come into Africa, where there were African scholars also, some we know of, some we, have, we do not know of. We find the city of the empire of Malai in Timbuktu, which became the center for Islamic learning. Became the center for Islamic learning 
Because why? The Quran was being taught and being recited. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for the people who hold on to his book for guidance. He raises their status by it. But those people who do not have a desire to learn Quran, when I say learn Quran, I'm saying to learn its recitation, to learn its laws, to learn its commands, to learn its advices by way of a, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he lowers their status. He lowers their status. And as he does in this life, in dunya, he raises the status of people in this dunya, he raises the status of the people of the Quran in Jannah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, li ashabi al-Quran, iqra. <laughs> he said that Allah the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that the person who memorizes the Quran, who reads the Quran, who puts the Quran to memory, who lived by it, who held on to it, he said it will be said to him, read and rise up as you did in dunya as you recited in dunya do that now for verily your place in jannah is where you stop reciting if we take the 30 ayats of surah al-mulk al-mulk which this surah has its own virtues this surah will stand as a shafia or an intercessor for those who memorized it on Yom Al-Qiyam. It will stand as an intercessor. But it has 30 ayats. So the person who memorized these ayats, he will recite these 30 ayats. And as he recites, he will ascend through the Jannah. He will ascend through paradise. See? And where he stops, at 30, he will stop at 30 levels of paradise. That will be his place in paradise. If we take a look, my beloved brothers and sisters, and we look at all the short surah in the Quran, in the back of the Quran, Ikhlas, in the Allah, but each ayah that we recite from those chapters will give us a level in Jannah. It will give us our own manzalak, manzalatak in Jannah, our own place, our own makan, our own area. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for those who hold. This is what it means when Allah says, Wa'atasimu bihabillah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did he not say that for every letter that is read from the Quran, you will have one hasana. You will have one hasana. And one hasana has ten hasana, the like thereof. Alif Lam mean hasana, walakin ali hasana, lam hasana. Mean hasana. And that means that Alif, he says, I do not mean that Alif Lam mean is a hasana. I mean that Alif is a hasana. Lam is a hasana. Mean is a hasana. Every letter that you recite from the book of Allah, the thing is, is the difference between <laughs> us and those before us was they took this seriously. They took this very seriously. Imagine yourself. This is a similitude that some of the scholars use. Imagine. Imagine that thousands and thousands of people came to hear you speak, to speak. People come, they come to hear speakers. But the most important person, the most important one 
out of all the people that came to speak, came to hear you speak. He came to hear you speak. The most important people of all these thousands of people, he came to hear you speak. This is the similar to that the, some scholars use to incite the believers to learn Quran because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to the one who recites Quran on Yom Al-Qiyam. وقولي قال هذا واستحل الله ولكم ولسائر المسلمين واستحضروه من كل ذنب إن هو عفور رحيم Alhamdulillah, wassalam وخشيتهم الرحمة وخفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم on the authority of Abu Huraira, he said in this hadith that those people, and this is very important for us because especially during this time of the year, because we gather for a lot of things, we gather for football games. We gather for the basketball. Oh, this is the season of illusion. The magicians are at work now. They have everybody preoccupied in what's going on. The holidays, the sports, the Super Bowl, this event, that event, this, the other event. See? But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that those people who gather in the, in, a, in the house, from the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they gather together to study it together that what happens to them is a sakina comes down upon them a sakina comes down upon them and they are covered with mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said that the angels take their wings and spread them out over them and Allah mentions these people with the ones who are with him in Jannah. This is very important, my beloved brothers and sisters. This is how we get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that, an anas radiallahu anhu qaw, qaw rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna lillahi ta'ala ahlina min al-nas. Qalu, Ya Rasulullah, men whom? Qala, whom? Ahlullah, Ahlul Quran, wa khasatah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah has his own people from mankind. This is what he's telling the Sahaba, radiallahu alayhi wa He has his own people. And they say to the Prophet, who are they? He said, Ahlul, Ahlul Quran, the people of the Quran are the people of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahlul Quran, Ahlullah. The people of the Quran are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says at the end of his hadith, wa khasata. He said, and they are special with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes hardship from their path. These are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala readily answers their dua. These are the people 
whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them from his wrath and his punishment. And he gives them glad tidings with those who are with him in paradise. The host of the people, the, the, the angels and all the heavenly hosts. These are the people that are special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises their status. These are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises their status in this life and in the next life. So, my nasiha to all of us, myself and you, as we cry, the Muslim cries for a few things. Matter of fact, the Muslim cries for everything. He wants everything. He wants respect from the non-believer. That's number one. He wants to be respected, or as I should say, he wants respect in this society. He wants honor in this society. He wants to be able to practice his deen freely in this society. And the society basically has become corrupt in every aspect. The problem is, is that it has become the way it has become and we are intertwined with it one way or another. One way or another we are intertwined with it. Imam Manus says every khutbah opportunity. Take the opportunity. Let's make an opportunity to do some good. So let's make an opportunity to make a commitment within ourselves, individually, so that collectively we can begin to become those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised in status. With him, we don't need to be raised in status with the human being. If we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power and control over everything, and you have to really, really, really believe that. But we will not ever acquire the status of those who came before us. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een, the tabi'i and the tabi'i tabi'een until we begin to hold on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's, there's no other way that we can, there's no other way that's going to be, that's going to happen. 